Hello, my name is Alex and I used to be the Director of Public Book Sales at the Church of Scientology in London. Aaron Hubbard purchased St Hill Manor in 1959 and it served as the worldwide headquarters of the Church of Scientology until he fled the country in fear of ever-increasing scrutiny from the British government in 1967. Since then, it has served as Scientology's UK headquarters and plays a significant role in its global operations. Every year it hosts the annual gathering of the International Association of Scientologists, for which thousands of parishioners flock to the estate to hear the leader David Miscavige speak. Concerns have been raised over Scientology's influence on East Grinstead since the 1960s. In his book Bareface Messiah, Russell Miller wrote, Scientology even seemed to be wearing out its welcome in East Grinstead, where the locals were complaining they were being overwhelmed. In 1967, the East Grinstead Courier published an article in which locals called for a stop to Scientology's expansion. It said, There was a feeling they were trying to take over. An estate agent, dentist, hairdresser, jewellers, finance company and a couple of doctors were all Scientology run. People didn't like it. Scientology's relationship with the local community is governed by its public relations policies, which aim to create what is known as a Special Zone Plan. Through its Office of Special Affairs, Scientology's goal is not to help the community and local causes, but to, quote, increase favourable image. By making large donations to local charities and inviting council members to lavish dinners and Tom Cruise film premieres, Scientology is looking to improve its reputation, not the local community. According to policy, Scientology's goal is to bring government into a state of complete compliance with the goals of Scientology. L. Ron Hubbard instructs staff to infiltrate society by getting jobs as secretarial staff and building relationships with local opinion leaders. In his policy letter named The Safe Point, Hubbard states Scientology's viability depends on having all areas and persons who could affect or influence the operation under PR control. Scientology's goal is not to help East Grinstead or its local causes, but to establish strong enough relationships with people that matter so that it turns a blind eye to its harmful and controlling activities. In this video, you will hear personal stories from several people who have spent time at St Hill, both as staff and as paying parishioners. This is what is really going on behind closed doors. Hi, this is Tony Ortega from New York. I'm the former editor-in-chief of The Village Voice. I've been investigating and writing about Scientology for 28 years. Like everything in Scientology, the policies of safe pointing come from the founder, L. Ron Hubbard. He laid it out. The idea was that Scientology would create safe points around it by recruiting people, by grooming people, specifically local officials. Scientology spends a lot of resources on this. Their public relations teams are always trying to curry favor with local city officials, state officials, by always telling them about all the good work Scientology does in order to create an ally. And why do they do that? Because if that local mayor or that local state representative only hears all these good things about Scientology, they will turn a blind eye so that what Scientology actually does, it can do with impunity. David Miscavige can financially extort his members, he can rip apart families. Uh, all the things that we've learned Scientology does, they can do without worrying about too much scrutiny from local officials who really should be doing the job of making sure that citizens in their communities are not being treated this way. But safe pointing is very effective at convincing local mayors, other elected officials, simply to look the other way as the, at how Scientology actually operates once they have become a safe point. Hello, my name is Rachel Hastings, and uh, I am doing this video regarding the presence of Scientology in the UK. Um, I am an American, but I went about 
20 or so times to the UK while I was working for the Church of Scientology International. I saw some things that should be of concern to locals within East Grinstead. It's uh, such a beautiful place. Um, at the St. Hill base, as they call it, uh, the staff who work there are part of the C organization, which is a highly controlled group, uh, which I had to escape from. Um, I was tracked down and brought back and then escaped again. It took me years to be able to leave. People were posted outside of my house to try to track me down. Um, those same restraints are uh, imposed upon any Sioux organization member. They even uh, someone from their Office of Special Affairs, which is a legal office that handles what they consider a threat, which is anyone uh, whistleblowing upon them. Uh, someone actually hacked into my email and went into an Airbnb I had rented um, without permission before I got there to, to basically ambush me and can convince me to come back to sign paperwork um, NDAs uh, to, to try to get me to sign things saying I would never whistleblow or speak out. Um, the staff uh, there uh, in the UK uh, who I worked with um, every year one to three times a year over 15 years. They would be paid, uh, the US equivalent is uh, 46 US dollars a week and were expected to uh, purchase all of their hygiene products, undergarments, at, 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 uh, soap, things like that, uh, essentials. Um, uh, the food was often not good one time when I was there. Uh, we ran out of, it was for that International Association of Scientologists week, we ran out of food and they served us uh, cu cubes of processed ham and shredded cheese only for a full week, um, all the while receiving massive donations at the patrons ball they were having, massive, massive donations from people around the world who fly in there to be a part of that project. So uh, I can say firsthand that the videos that are created, because I worked on hundreds of those videos all around the world, um, in the UK, in Europe, in the Americas, in Asia, yeah, all over, um, they spend, the, Scientology actually spends probably about one to three percent of the money that they make it appear in the videos that they spent. Um, in order to turn around and receive massive donations, which I, uh, when I found out about that, I considered to, that to be fraud. And that event that occurs is a money-making event. David Miscavige himself told me in England at St. Hill that he, the, day, the day he puts the event on, he has it making money, and that money is the most vital part of these events and the charity event and the entire weekend and the videos created and the concerts and the performances they are all in order to put together a vehicle for eliciting very very huge massive donations from everyone the Scientologists are not allowed to leave that tent without making a donation um, staff are put under massive pressure. If they do not get a big enough donation, they do not make their quota, then they can be put on uh, food of only rice and beans. It was reported to me by staff in the UK that when they didn't make quotas on uh, selling books or getting donations, that they would uh, sometimes not be allowed to sleep or only be allowed to sleep a couple of hours a night for weeks and even months on end. And uh, a, a few staff actually told me that um, some were thrown into the pond um, as a practice that dates back to overboarding, throwing someone off a ship, which L. Ron Hubbard used to do with his Scientology ship. So these kinds of practices occur. Uh, CIRG members um, are not allowed to leave when they want to leave. They're often told they are not allowed to see family. Um, if anyone in their family says anything negative about Scientology, they're not allowed to speak to them. Um, 
in any form, write them a letter, call them, text them. They're not allowed to be on social media, the Sea Organization members, unless they have a Scientology account and they are a public relations specialist, which is very few of them. Uh, their passports are taken from them. Uh, they are not allowed to have a cell phone <coughs> or a mobile phone, as you would say, um, <coughs> unless it is controlled by the church and there's very specific software put on it so they are not allowed to access open internet. Their internet is controlled. These are the conditions that the staff are living under there, and they are violations of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights that is followed by the United Nations, and they're being violated every day. So um, I wanted to bring this up because uh, I love the UK, um, and I think uh, East Grinstead is such a lovely town. And I want people to be aware of what's really going on there. Hello, my name is Danielle. I grew up in Scientology, coming to their headquarters in East Grinstead in 1973 at age 11. At just age 12, I was sent alone with our parents to the flagship Apollo to be with L. Ron Hubbard for a year. Following being locked up in the chain lock of the ship by L. Ron Hubbard, I was sent back to the East Grinstead headquarters in England. At age 14, I was raped by a member of staff based at the headquarters in East Grinstead. I was sent to see what they call their ethics officer or master at arms. I was informed that it was my fault that the rape had happened and I had to make amends and was not allowed to report it to the police. At age 16, I was taken out of school by the Scientologists against my will and was told I could not take my A-levels. I had to work for the organisation instead. My mother went on to have a stroke and the Scientologists turned up at the hospital before any medical intervention could happen, stating that Scientology could handle her. She then had two more mini strokes and was finally admitted to hospital, but by then was paralyzed down her left side for the rest of her life. If it is true that the mayor of East Grinstead has accepted a £50,000 donation from Scientology, I say shame on you. If any of these donations over the years have gone to any children's charities, that makes it even worse. Hello, my name is Sam and in 2005, when I was 13 years old, I was taken from Switzerland and moved to England to start to work for the Church of Scientology. This story of abuse and neglect happened to me while I was working for the Continental Liaison Office for the Church of Scientology in St. Hill, East Queensland from 2008 until 2012. I have been suffering from depression and suicidal thought for a number of years while working there and finally, in 2012, I told my seniors about it. Instead of trying to help me, show compassion, or send me to a medical expert, they swiftly put me on a routing out form to be removed from their property so that I do not cause a public relations scandal that the newspapers could pick up. While I was on this routing out form, I was made to do physical labor as punishment and I had to do hours of false confessions, or as they call it, security check. At the end of that, I was sent back to my country of origin as not to be a problem for St. Hill management any longer. This is just one story of abuse that happens at St. Hill. A while back, I used to live in East Grinstead. I lived for two years at number six St. Hill Green. I was a devout Scientologist. I believed in it all. Progressively, I rose up the ranks. And one day, I was sent out on a mission because three people had killed themselves within a space of four months. And Scientology management were aghast. Three people in four months? Scientology extorts gobs of money. Ah, oh, it's a money extortion racket. To get the gold out of your teeth to get every coin and every dollar you own. And they promise in exchange an elevated spiritual being with incredible qualities, 
ability to withstand anything. So three people knocked themselves off. One was very gruesome. He hung himself not far from St. Hill. He, hung, he was found hanging from a tree. Now, why is it that no one knows about these? Why didn't the East Grinstead Courier or anyone? I'll tell you why. Scientology has a whole unit called Office of Special Affairs, and their entire job is to bury anything that might harm their repute and to pump up and engage and befriend and pamper local law enforcement, local politicians. This is all design. It's their agenda to make themselves look good. But I will tell you, there are many gruesome things that happen behind that wall of security. And people in East Grinstead don't have a clue of what is really going on behind closed doors. I was in for 40 years. I wanted it to work till I woke up. Hi, my name is Mitch Brisker, and for 30 years, I was the chief architect of Scientology's global propaganda machine. Back in 2016, I accompanied David Miscavige, the IS of Anna St. Hill. On the afternoon of the big event, I was summoned to meet him backstage in the giant town. When I went in, he was just wearing an undershirt, but his arms and his chest and his neck and his face were extremely shiny and greasy, like he'd literally been dipped in fat. He picked up an aerosol can, showed it to me, and then explained that he was, had sprayed this uh, microbial barrier on himself that you know, medical workers would use in an infectious you know, ward at a hospital. Uh, so you know, apparently he said he, you know, he has to see a lot of people and shake hands and he's worried about catching something and this was before the pandemic. So I really don't know what he was worried about. But the thing is, this guy, is a, he's a total germaphobe. And he loves getting the admiration from people. But he doesn't actually like being around them or being close. But, you know, he's willing to do it when it comes to, you know, rubbing a little flesh with the, the local, you know, officials to safe point Scientology and make sure that it gets accepted and so forth. Hello. My name's Pete Griffiths. I was at St. Hill in the late 1980s and early 1990s. When I first went there, I was sent uh, to do some training on a thing called the OEC course, which is short for Organization Executive Course. I'd only joined staff about two weeks before, and I'd been promised that I'd be getting about £200 a week. I actually got nothing. And I was at St. Hill for six months with my pregnant wife, and we were paid absolutely nothing for weeks on end. One week we were sent, I think, £20, and we just went out and bought a pizza and stuffed ourselves because we were actually starving. We were having to scrape and cadge and borrow money off them. I think I borrowed money off Barclays Bank. Um, at the time, we also had a house, which we eventually sold, um, and the money just, just kept us going which was also keeping Scientology going. Now, when that was all finished and I went back to Sunderland, which is where we were based, things didn't go too well. I mean, I wasn't producing exactly what they thought I should be producing. And as a result, I was told to go down to St. Hill again, which, you know, I thought was okay. My experience there was bloody awful, but I didn't expect that I would actually be sent on punishment duty. When I got there, wearing my best suit, I was sent into an area below the Great Hall, which was like a big basement, and there was a huge pile of rotten, mouldy books, paperback, hardback. It was a massive pile, and I was basically told to move them from one side of the space to the other. This is a bit like, you know, the old digging a hole and filling it in again. And I was told to do that. And I'm like, what? Um, so you've got to do that. That's what you have to do because you are a robot. I was called other names as well, which I can't rightly remember now, but I do remember being called a robot, which means according to Scientology, I was a person that couldn't do anything without being told what to do. Great. 
Um, I obviously got out of that situation. And then when I went back and rejoined my wife, we discussed what was going on. The fact that promised £200 a week. And in the entire three years I was there, I don't think I got £200 the whole time. We finally left and it was like escaping. We had to escape to get away. These people, uh, on the surface, they seem fine and they're all nice and smiles and friendly. But when you scratch the surface, you're dealing with a sinister cult and it is absolutely diabolical. I think what people need to understand about Scientology is that you've already signed something at the start of each course to say that if you go insane, you don't want psychiatrists to look after you. You're going to do the introspection rundown. Now, the introspection rundown is they'll lock you up in a room and uh, not talk to you, and they'll just feed you until you snap out of your psychosis. So there was no way that I, in that position, I couldn't just say, right, fuck off, I'm going home, you can't stop me. I'm going to, you know, I could have easily fought my way out of there. I'm a big lad, you know. I could have caused a big scene but to me to me at the time it was like i thought if i did that i'd get overpowered eventually with a lot of people and i'd be thrown into a room and i'd be trapped there and i was actually scared for my life and i was like i was just like yeah it's the, it's the only time i've ever felt really trapped in my life i was like how am i going to get out of this and uh and in fact whilst i was there uh, somebody had ran off from the um, from the Saint Hill auditing area. She'd gone back home, but she lived local. Half an hour later, they'd been and fetched her. So I was thinking, oh, they're just going to follow me. Now they're going to try and get me back. It was quite scary. Hello, this is Neville. I served on the ship in the 1960s and 1970s under L. Ron Hubbard. And in that time, I saw him order a four-year-old child being put into the chain locker I also have seen adults being put in there and then people being thrown overboard, including people who couldn't swim. I was locked up in the basement in Scotland uh, because I wanted to leave uh, because I had a medical condition which they told me could only be treated by Scientology processing. I managed to get out. I got the police to came in and release me and I went down to South the met saw doctors and then it got it cured that way and then I returned to the ship. And then what happened when, I understand, you were locked up in the boiler room of the manor as well? Yes, I was locked up there in a leaky, in a leaky room there where a boiler was pumping out carbon monoxide and told I could not leave until I'd written up my list of alleged crimes I'd committed. I had to make up a fictitious list in order to achieve that target and this list was then subsequently, they tried to use it against me. The, the hilarious point being is that all these crimes were allegedly committed before I got into Scientology. I got into Scientology when I was seven years old. And then what would you like to say to the council if it is true that they're accepting donations from Scientology? What is your view on that? Well, it shows that they're bought and paid for. Hello, my name is Martin Padfield and I'm just doing a very short testimony to the effect that abuses in Scientology are very real and continue on to this day, as I've uh, witnessed myself many, many times. Having been in Scientology, a total of 28 years. Um, some of those years between 1984 and around about 1994 were at St. Hill. Mm. And in particular, one of, one of those years, I was sent to the International Headquarters of Scientology in California. Um, I was the victim of human trafficking. I was put onto their punishment program, which they call the rehabilitation project force my passport was taken away i had no access to the outside world to my family to um uh, i had no money and just no access to the outside world for about a year i was then sent back to the uk back to saint hill and continued on the same program in much the same conditions doing uh, extreme manual labor for um 12 to 14 hours a day there was a number of scientology abusive practices that i was uh witnessed or, or been a victim of one production meeting. I had a very large glass ashtray thrown at my head for saying the wrong thing. If you have somebody within your uh, circle, friends or family circle, who are in any way critical of Scientology, it's expected that you disconnect from them. And therefore you very often 
um, have to to cease all contact with with family members or close friends. So this um, this policy of disconnection breaks up families, and this is a, an ongoing um, abuse. Um, I was also witness to a number of times when uh, women who got pregnant were put under a lot of pressure to get abortions. You could say that they were forced um, to, to, to get abortions. Another example was a friend of mine called Nick Wackley, who was a fairly senior executive at St Hill, relayed to me in great detail how he was beaten up personally by David Miscavige. And um, this was a fairly common practice for those who fell on the wrong side, <laughs> fell on the wrong side of him. According to Scientology, I'm a religious bigot who exploits my few weeks of participation over a decade ago. My course completion certificates show I was a Scientologist for five years, and my last service was delivered in 2016. They say I'm part of a hate group online, and that my claims are untrue and utterly ludicrous. I believe in freedom of belief and our universal right to free speech. I have no problem with those who choose to follow the teachings of L. Ron Hubbard. I might disagree with them, but that's the beauty of power of choice. In Scientology, power of choice is something its members sacrifice the moment they walk through the door. Its extremist belief system continues to foster a culture of fear, and it provides an environment where abusers can thrive when they are afforded ethics protection. I believe that no organisation should exist where its members are raped, disconnected from family, or forced to terminate their pregnancy. When I was a teenager, I was locked in a room and told I couldn't leave. I had signed my seal contract and was en route to spending the rest of my life working for the church. You have just heard a handful of personal stories of what really goes on at Scientology's St Hill base in East Grinstead. But the truth of the matter is this. This happens at every level and every city in which Scientology operates. Countless stories exist of how Scientology destroys lives, tears families apart and takes advantage of the old and the vulnerable. And through its policy of safe pointing, its goal is to assert control over local officials and influence decision makers so that they can get away with whatever they want. This is the reality of what goes on behind closed doors. And all I ask is, are you okay with it?